Admiral Jackson Thompson marched down the gleaming marble corridor. Polished chrome framed the grand entry of the Galactic Council Chambers. It gleamed coldly, reflecting his stern features back at him. Every muscle in his body tensed, the weight of the galaxy hanging heavy on his shoulders. As a newly appointed delegate of Earth, Thompson was on his way to a historical moment. Humans latecomers to the galactic stage had finally been granted a seat on the Council. However, this was not some intergalactic tea party. The Council was in an uproar over humanity's latest military exploits. After decades of simmering border skirmishes with the Kraler Empire, humanity had finally struck back. But what had stunned seasoned galactic leaders wasn't the human victory, but the way humans had achieved it. Thompson reached the towering chrome double doors and took a deep breath. This moment would decide the fate of Earth. He squared his shoulders, a surge of defiant pride flooding his body. He might be a representative of a young race, but humanity wouldn't cower before a room of aliens. With a steely determination, he pushed the doors open. A wave of murmurs crashed over Thompson as he entered. The immense chamber was a vast amphitheater, its tiered seats occupied by a dizzying array of species. Sleek, scaled xylonians, multi-limbed insectoids, towering figures cloaked in shimmering light, a cross-section of the galaxy's power players. All eyes were on him, a mix of curiosity, pity and outright hostility evident in their gazes. Thompson held his head high, finding his designated seat at the edge of the chamber. Earth's position was telling, relegated to the periphery, he suppressed a sigh. The battle for respect had already begun. A booming voice shattered the tense silence, echoing from the central podium. It belonged to the council chair, a massive reptilian being known as Vrol of the Drax Imperium. Before Thompson could settle in, Vrol was already condemning humanity's barbaric tactics in the recent Krayler conflict. Words like atrocities and war crimes poisoned the air, painting a bleak picture in the minds of the gathered delegates. The charges were outrageous, Thompson knew, yet expected. The Krayler, brutal slavers and expansionists, had tested humanity's resolve for far too long. The recent victory had been decisive, thanks to the unorthodox strategies Thompson himself had helped design. But those strategies, well, they didn't conform to the so-called rules of galactic warfare. This wasn't truly a war crimes tribunal. It was a calculated move to shame Earth and keep them in check. Decades, even centuries, of codified interstellar conflict had created a peculiar playbook. War, as the galaxy knew it, was a strangely ritualized affair. Limited strikes, targeted destruction, and a gentlemanly avoidance of civilian populations were the expectations. Humans, in their desperation, had tossed this playbook out the window. Now Thompson could feel judgment pressing down from the balconies above. He shifted in his seat as Vrol listed supposed human transgressions orbital bombardments of Krayler cities, deployment of cloaked attack drones against non-military vessels, and the list went on. A ripple of shock and disgust ran through the council. Thompson clenched his fists beneath the table, his nails digging into his palms. He knew the optics were awful. Earth was being cast as the villain, a wild newcomer who flouted galactic norms. Yet the council had never known the horrors inflicted by the Krayler on human colonies. They hadn't seen the glass planets, the orbital slave markets. Humans had fought with the fury of a cornered animal, born out of desperation the privileged delegates couldn't comprehend. Vrol's condemnation dragged on, each word a hammer blow against humanity's reputation. Several representatives called out for sanctions for Earth to be expelled from the Council before they could unleash their savagery upon the rest of the galaxy. Thompson felt isolated, an unwelcome stain on the Council's pristine order. Finally, with a flourish of his clawed hand, Vrol concluded his diatribe. An expectant silence filled the chamber as all eyes turned to Thompson. It was his turn, Earth's turn, to respond. But what could he possibly say? How could he argue against cold facts that portrayed humans as bloodthirsty monsters? A wave of bitter resignation threatened to engulf him. Perhaps the Council was right. Perhaps humans were too primitive, too brutal for this level of interstellar society. But then, a flash of righteous anger speared through him. No, Earth might be young, but they weren't barbaric. He stood up. The delegates, taken aback by his defiance, fell silent. Thompson's voice rang out, clear and firm against the backdrop of hushed whispers. His words were measured, yet carried the weight of human struggle against a merciless enemy. He spoke of the countless lives lost to Krayler aggression, 
of entire human worlds turned to ash. Thompson painted vivid images of brutality, of suffering that the council had comfortably ignored. As his voice rose, he felt a change in the atmosphere. The initial scorn on the delegates' faces began to melt, replaced by something akin to unease. Thompson spared no detail highlighting the horrors the council had conveniently overlooked. The Azalonians shifted uncomfortably, perhaps recalling their own troubled histories. The insectoids, usually unflappable, twitched their antennae in agitation. Then, Thompson shifted his focus. He didn't apologize for Earth's actions, nor did he shy away from acknowledging their brutal efficiency. Instead, he framed those actions as a matter of absolute necessity. Humanity had been pushed to the brink. There had been no room for rules when survival hinged on every single victory. The Krayler had never played by the so-called civilized rules of war, and humans had had to adapt or die. Thompson declared, we fought not out of malice but out of desperation. We fought like a cornered animal because that is exactly what we were. His blunt words hung in the air. The silence stretched on, lengthy and uncomfortable. Thompson scanned the delegates' faces. Some looked troubled. Others looked thoughtful. None held the same venomous hostility as before. He took a deep breath, his voice softening. The galaxy is more dangerous than your rules anticipate. I urge you to reconsider them. I urge you to understand what drove us down this path. If humanity was wrong, I it was because your laws allowed the Krayler to torment us unchecked. It was because we were alone out there on the bleeding edge of the galaxy, and there was no one to protect us but ourselves. With that, he sat down. The silence lingered as the council delegates digested his words. Thompson knew it would take time for his speech to ripple through the chamber's political undercurrents. Yet something had shifted. The Earth delegation was no longer an easily dismissed anomaly. They had forced the galaxy to confront the brutal realities at its frontiers, the places where their rulebook seemed woefully out of touch. Would it be enough? Would Earth find acceptance or censure? Thompson didn't know. But as the Council's first session adjourned, one thing was for certain, humanity wouldn't be ignored again. In the days that followed, the Galactic Council buzzed with activity. Thompson was surprised to find himself the focus of countless hushed conversations. Delegates of normally antagonistic species stopped him in the hallways, their faces a mixture of caution and curiosity. He'd become something of a dark horse, a disruptor who'd upset the comfortable status quo. Some tried to probe him for weaknesses, to find cracks in the human narrative. Others seemed genuinely curious, peppering him with questions about humanity's history and their philosophy on warfare. Thompson answered them with candor, never shying away from the harsh realities of their experiences. The more he spoke, the more he saw the complexities of the Galactic Council, the internal factions, the power games, the underlying prejudices. Unsurprisingly, the Krayler made a furious pushback. They tried to portray humanity's actions as unhinged aggression, a symptom of a rogue species. But their cries fell flatter than before. Thompson's speech had exposed a nerve, a fear that the Council's neat rules of engagement were inadequate for the true threats lurking in the darkness beyond their borders. Informal gatherings sprouted around Thompson. Surprisingly, it was the delegates from other young, embattled civilizations who gravitated towards him the most. They spoke of their own border struggles of enemies that ignored the Council's edicts in favor of brutality. A quiet coalition began to form, made up of those tired of living in fear, tired of having their pleas for aid drowned out by galactic bureaucracy. The Council Chair, Vrol, was less than pleased with this turn of events. Thompson was summoned to several closed-door meetings, where the Drax Elder hissed warnings and thinly veiled threats. His bluster barely phased Thompson. Earth had stared into the abyss, and a power-hungry reptile was nothing in comparison. And then, the most unexpected twist, an official invitation from the insectoid delegation for a formal exchange. These notoriously reclusive beings were infamous for their bluntness and their unparalleled military strategizing. Thompson accepted cautiously, wondering at the motive behind this sudden interest. The insectoid compound was a stark contrast to the polished marble of the council halls. It thrummed with a strange, efficient energy. Thompson was escorted through maze-like corridors, where multi-limbed figures scuttled about, their compound eyes gleaming in the dim light. He was led to a vast chamber, austere and functional, where a lone insectoid awaited. Thompson had heard rumors about this particular delegate, 
a tactical genius nicknamed the Draxi for its uncanny ability to dissect battlefield strategies. Without preamble, the insectoid chittered a strange greeting and gestured for Thompson to take a seat. Its segmented form moved with a disconcerting speed, its clicking mandibles forming words in heavily accented galactic standard. Your tactics against the Krayler were unorthodox, the Draxi rasped, yet undeniably effective. Thompson nodded, bracing himself for a thinly veiled critique. Instead, he was surprised when the insectoid continued, there is efficiency in your brutality. A ruthless pragmatism your council colleagues lack. We of the insectoid collective value such qualities. But the Draxi leaned in, its multifaceted eyes shimmering darkly. The border regions are unstable. Old balances shift. Enemies once contained now grow bold. The council is slow, hidebound. There may come a time when their rules serve no purpose but to ensure our collective destruction. Thompson held his breath. This was an astounding admission from these notoriously isolationist beings. It was also a thinly veiled offer, an invitation into a different kind of alliance. What you are proposing, Thompson ventured, is a serious threat to galactic order. The Draxi chittered, almost like a laugh, perhaps. But the existing order is already broken. It merely refuses to admit it. Your actions forced the galaxy to open its eyes, however briefly. Thompson considered the implications. An alliance with the insectoids, with their reputation and tactical brilliance, would be a game-changer. It could protect Earth, and perhaps it could become a much-needed catalyst for change. A difference that acknowledged the true threats beyond the stars. A change that prepared the galaxy for the enemies that didn't care for civilized rules of war. As he left the insectoid compound, the future of Earth hanging in the balance. Admiral Jackson Thompson knew one thing for sure, the game had just gotten a whole lot more interesting.